Yeah, chapter one. I am Isaiah, the son of Omaz, and this is the message that I was given about Judah and Jerusalem when Ushia, Judah, Ahaz, and Hezekiah were the kings of Judah. A guilty nation. The Lord has said, Listen, heaven and earth. The children I raised have turned against me. Oxen and donkeys know who owns and feed them, but my people own ever land. Israel, you are a sinful nation, loaded down with guilt. You are wicked and corrupt and have turned from the Lord, the holy God of Israel. Why be punished more? Why not give up your sin? Your head is badly bruised and you are weak all over. From your head to your toes, there isn't a healthy spot. Bruises, cut, and open sores go without care or or it is ease to pain. A country in ruins. Your country lies in ruins. Your tower, towns are in ashes. Foreigners and strangers take and destroy your land while you watch. Enemies surround Jerusalem, alone like a hut in a vineyard or in a cocoon field. Zion will have disappeared like Sodom and Gomorrah if the Lord All-Powerful had not let a few of its people survive. Justice, not sacrifices. You are no better than the leaders and people were Sodom and Gomorrah. So listen to the Lord God. Your sacrifices mean nothing to me. I am sick of your offerings of rams and choice cattle. I don't like the blood of bulls or lambs or goats. Who asked you to bring all this? When you come to worship me, stay out of my temple. Your sacrifices are worthless and your incense disgusting. I can't stand the evil you do on your new moon festivals or on your Sabbath and other times of worship. I hate your new moon festivals and all others as well. They are a very burden and I'm tired of caring. No matter how much you pray, I only listen. You are too violent. Wash yourselves clean. I hate your filthy deeds. Stop doing wrong and learn to live right. See that justice is done. Defend the widows and orphans and help the oppressed. An invitation from the Lord. I, the Lord, invite you to come and talk Talkable. Your sins are sacred red, but they will be with whiter than snow or wool. If you willingly obey me, the best crop in the land will be yours. But if you turn against me, your enemies will kill you. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Lord condemns. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you are like an unfaithful wife. Once your judges were honest and your people lived right. Now you are a city full of murderers. murderers. Your silver is sick, fake and your wine is watered down. Your leaders have rejected me to become friends of crooks. Crooks. Your rulers are looking for gifts and bribes. Widow and orphans. 
never get a fair trial. I am the Lord of powerful, the mighty ruler of Israel. And I make you a promise. You are now my enemy, and I will show my anger by taking revenge on you. I will punish you terribly and burn away everything that makes you unfit to worship me. Jerusalem, I will choose judges and advisors like those you had before. Your new name will be justice and faithfulness. The Lord will save Jerusalem. Jerusalem, you will be saved by showing justice. Zion's people who turn to me will be saved by doing right. But those rebellious sinners who turn against me, the Lord, will all disappear. You will be made ashamed of those gloves of trees where you worship the idols. You will be like a grove of trees dying in the drought. Your strongest leaders will be like dry wood set on fire by their idols. No one will be able to help as they all go up in flames. Chapter 2 Peace that rests forever. This is the message I was given about Judah and Jerusalem in the future. The mountain with the lost temple will be the highest of all. It will reach above the hills. Every nation will rush, rush to it. Many people will come and say, Let's go to the mountain of the Lord of God of Jacob and worship in his temple. The Lord will teach us his law from Jerusalem and will obey him. He will settle argument between nations. They will pound their sword and their spears into the wrecks and shovels. They will never make war or attack on one another. People of Israel, let's live by the right of the Lord. Following simple custom, customs, our Lord, you have deserted your people, Israel, because they follow customs of nations from the East. They worship Pal Pal Palestine gods and are close friends of foreigners. They have endless treasure of silver and gold. They have countless horses and war chariots. Everywhere in country they worship the idol they have made, and so all of them will be ashamed and disgraced. Don't forgive them. A day of judgment. Every one of you go hide among the rocks and in the ground, because the Lord is fearsome, marvelous, and glorious. When the Lord comes, everyone who is proud will be made humble, and the Lord alone will be honored. The Lord, all oh, powerful, has chosen a day when those who are proud and conceited will be put down. The tall and towering cedars of Lebanon will be destroyed. So will the oak trees of Basham, all oh, high mountains and hills, every strong fortress, all the seagoing ships, and every beautiful boat. When that day comes, everyone who is proud will be put down. Only the Lord will be honored. Idols will be gone for good. You had better hide in cave and holes. The Lord will be fearsome, marvelous, and glorious when he comes to terrify people on earth. On that day, everyone will draw to the mall and batch their idols of silver and gold they made to worship. The Lord will be fearsome, marvelous, and glorious when he comes to terrifying people on earth. They will hide in caves in the hills. Stop trusting the power of humans. They are all going to die. How, so how can they help? Chapter 3, Judgment on Jerusalem and Judah The mighty 
Lord, all powerful is going to take away from Jerusalem and you the everything you need. You beard and water, bread and water, soldiers and he heroes, judges and prophets, leaders and army officers, officers and advisors, fortune tellers and others who test the tr future. He will he will let children and babies become your rulers. You will each be cruel to friends and neighbors. Young people will insert their elders. No one will show respect to those who deserve it. Some of you will grab hold of the relative and say, You still have a coat? Be our leader and rule be this pile of ruins. But the answer will be, I can't do you any good. Don't make me your leader. There's no food or clothing left in my house. Jerusalem and Judah, you rebelled against your glorious Lord. Your words and your actions made you strum stumble and fall. The look, look on your face shows that your sin fresh Sodom and you don't try to hide it. You are in for the f trouble and you have brought it all on yourselves. The wrong kind of leaders. Tell those who obey God you are very fortunate. You will be rewarded for what you have done. Tell those who disobeyed, you are in big trouble when you did to others will come back to you. Though you are good people, you are loved and abused by women and children. You are confused by leaders who guide you down the wrong path. The Lord is ready to accuse and judge all nations. He will even judge you, rule, you rulers and leaders of his own nation. You destroyed his vineyard and filled your houses by robbing the poor. The Lord of Power says, says, You have crushed my people and loved in the dirt the faces of the poor. The women of Jerusalem, the Lord says, the women of Jerusalem are bowed and strut around, the winkling shamelessly. They wear anklet, anklet, jingle, and call attention to the way they walk. But I, the Lord, will cover their heads with swords and will uncover their private parts. When that day comes, I will take away from those women all the fine jewelry they wear on their ankles, head, necks, ears, arms, noses, fingers, and on their clothes. I will remove their veils, their Belch their perfume, their magic charms, their loyal loves, and all their fancy dresses, hats, and purses. In place of perfume, there will be a stink. In place of belt, there will be lobs. In place of fancy hair, those they will have bald heads instead of expensive expensive clothes they will wear sackcloth instead of beauty they will have ugly scars the fighting men of Jerusalem will be killed in battle the city will mourn and sit in the dirt empty and tired of its people chapter 4 when this happens Seven women will grab the same man, and each of them will say, I'll buy my own food and clothes. 
Just marry me and take away my disgrace. The Lord will bless his people who survive. The time is coming when the Lord will make his land fruitful and glorious again. And the people of Israel who survive will take great pride in what the land produces. Everyone who is left alive in Jerusalem will be called special. After the Lord sent the fiery uh, judgment to clean the city and its people of their violent deeds, they, the Lord, recovered the whole city and its meeting, meeting places with the thick cl cloud each day and with the fl flaming fire each night. God's own glory will be like a huge tent that covers everything. It will provide shade from the heat of the sun and the place of shelter and protection from storms and rain. Chapter 5 A song about a vineyard. The Lord said, I will sing a song about my friend's vineyard that was on the side of a fault hill. My friends dug the ground, removed the stones, and planted the best vines. He built a watchtower and dug a pit in the rocky ground for pressing the grapes. He hoped they would be sweet, but bitter grapes were already produced. Recent people of Israel and Jerusalem of uh, Judah, you be the judge of me in my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard? I hoped for sweet grapes, but bitter grapes were all that grow. Now I will let you know what I am going to do. I will cut down the hatch and tear down the wall. My vineyard will be trampled and left in ruins. It will turn into a desert, neither pruned nor hold. It will be covered with a throne and prayer. I will command the clouds not to send rain. I am the Lord all powerful. Israel is vineyard and Judah is a garden I tended with care. I had hoped for honesty and for justice, but dishonesty and cries for mercy were all I found. Isaiah condemns social injustice. You are in a trouble, you take over house after house and field after field until there is no room left for anyone else in all the land. But the Lord all powerful has made this promise to me. Those large and beautiful homes will be left empty with no one to take care of them. For hectares of grapevine will produce only 27 liters of juice and 180 liters of seed will produce merely 18 liters of grain. You are in for trouble. You get up early to start drinking and you keep it too late into the night. At your drinking parties, you have the music of a stringed instrument, tambourines and fruits. But you never even think about all the Lord has done and so he people know nothing about him. That's why many of you will be dragged off to foreign land. Your leaders will starve to death and everyone else will suffer from thirst. The word of the dead has opened its mouth wide and it's eagerly waiting for the leaders of Jerusalem and for its noisy clouds. It's special for those who take pride.
pride in that city. Its citizens have been put down. Its proud people have been brought to shame. But the Holy Lord God of power is praised because He has shown who He is by bringing justice. His people will, like, will be like sheep grazing in their own pasture and they will take off what was left by others. You are in for trouble, the lies you tell are like ropes by which you drag along sin and evil. And you say, let the Holy God of Israel hurry up and do what he has promised so we can see it for ourselves. You are headed for trouble. You say wrong is right. Darkness is right light and bitter is sweet you think you're clever and smart and you're great at drinking and mixing drinks but you're in for trouble you exact bribes to let the guilty go free and you cheat the innocent out of fair trial you go up in frame like a straw and hay you have rejected the teaching of the Holy Lord God of power of Israel. Now your roots will rot and your bosom will turn to dust. You're the Lord people, but you made him terribly angry and he struck you with his mighty arm. Mountains shook and dead bodies covered the streets like garbage. The Lord is still angry and he is ready to strike you again. Foreign nations will attack. The Lord has sing signaled for the foreign nations to come and attack you. He has already whistled and they are coming as fast as they can. None of them are Tired, they don't sleep or get drowsy, drowsy, and they run without trembling. Their belts don't come loose, their sandal straps don't break, their arrows are sharp, and their bows and ready. The hoofs of their horses are hard as flint. The fields of their all work ch ch chariot turns as fast as whirlwind. They roar and grow like fierce young lions as they grab their victims and drag them off where no one can rescue them. On the day they attack, they will lower like the ocean and across the land you will see nothing but darkness and trouble because the light of day will be covered by thick clouds. Isaiah chapter 6 A vision of the Lord in the temple In the year that King Ashia died I had a vision of the Lord. He was on his throne high above, and his rod filled the temple, framing creature with six wings, each were flying over him. They covered their faces with two of their wings and their bodies with two more. They used the other two wings for flying. As they shouted, holy, 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 Lord, oh, powerful the earth is filled with your glory. As they shouted, the door post of the temple shook. As they shouted, the door post of the temple shook. The temple was filled with smoke. Then I cried out, I'm doomed. Everything I say is sinful, and so are the words of everyone around me. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord all-powerful, 
One of the flaming creatures flew a ball to me with the burning coal that it had taken from the altar with a pair of metal tongs. I tuned, I touched my lips with the cock coal and said, This has touched your lips. Your sins are forgiven and you are no longer guilty. After this, I heard the Lord ask, is there anyone I can send? Will someone speak for us? I will go. I answered, send me. Then the Lord told me to go and speak this message to the people. You will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never see. The Lord also said, make these people stubborn. Make them stop up their ears, cover their eyes eyes and fail to understand then let them turn to me and be healed then i asked the lord how long will this last the lord answered until their towns and destroyed and their houses are deserted until their fields are empty and i have sent them far away leaving their land in ruins if only a tenth of the people are left, even they will be destroyed. But just as stumps remain after three have been cut down, some of my chosen ones will be left. Chapter 7 Isaiah of a half to King Ahaz. Ahaz the son of Jotam and the grandson of Ushia was king of Judah when King Rezin of Syria, King Pekah son of Remaliah of Israel went to attack Jerusalem. But they were not able to do what they had planned. When news reached, reached the royal palace, the Syria and had joined the forces with Israel, King Ahaz and everyone in Judah were so terrified that they shook like trees in the windstorm. Then the Lord said to me, Take your son, Shirzebab, and go see King Ahaz. You will find him on the road near the clothes makers' shops at the end of the canal that brings water from the upper pool. Tell Ahad to stop worrying. There's no need for him to be afraid of King Redzin and King Pekha. They are very angry, but they are nothing more than a dying fire. Ahad doesn't need to fear their evil treat to invade and defeat Judah and Jerusalem and to let the son of Tavil be king in his place. I, the Lord, promise that this will never happen. Damascus is just the capital of Syria and King Razin lose only the Damascus. Samaria is just the capital of Israel, the King Pekah lose only in Samaria. But in less than 65 years, Israel will be destroyed. And if Ahaz and his officers don't trust me, they will be defeated. A son named Emmanuel. Once again, the Lord God spoke to King Ahaz. This time, he said, ask me for pr proof then my promise will come true. Ask for something to happen deep in the world of the dead or high in the heavens above. No, Lord, Ahaz answered. I own test you. Then I said, listen, every one of you in the royal family of David, you have already tried my patience. Now you're trying God's patience by refusing to ask for proof. But the Lord will still give you proof. A virgin is pregnant. She will have a son and will name him Emmanuel. 
Even before the boy is old enough to know how to choose between right and wrong, he will eat yogurt and honey, and the countries of two kings you fear will be destroyed. But the Lord will make more trouble for your people and your kingdom than any of you have known since Israel broke away from Judah. He will even bring the king of Assyria to attack you. The treat of an invasion. When the time comes, the Lord will whistle, and armies will come from Egypt like flies, and from Assyria like bees. They will settle everywhere in the deep valleys and between the rocks, and every thorn bush, and all over the pasture land. The Lord will pay the king of Assyria to bring a razor from across the Euphrates River and save your head and every hair on your body, including your bread, beard. Everyone who is able to save only one cow and two sheep will have enough milk to make yogurt. In fact. Everyone left in the land will eat yogurt and honey, vineyard that had one thousand vines and were were one thousand pieces of silver will turn into thorn patches. You go there to hunt with your bows and arrows because the whole country will be covered with thorn bushes. The hills where you once. Planted crops will be overgrown with thorns, and this this till this till he will be afraid to go there. Uh, and your castle. Ship and go to will be turned the rules on those hills. Chapter eight. A warning and a hope. The Lord said, "Isaiah, get something to write on. Then write in big, clear letters the name. Mahoshalal Hashibaj. I will tell Uriah the priest and Zechariah son of Jeberit." To serve as witnesses to this. Some time later, my wife and I had a son, and the Lord said, "Name him Baherla Salla Hashabaj, because before he can say 'Mommy' or 'Daddy,' the king of Assyria will attack and." Take everything of value from Damascus and Samaria. The Lord spoke to me again and said, "These people have refused the gentle waters of Shiraz, Shiloa, and have gradually gone over to the side of King Razin and King Pekha." Now I will send the king of Assyria against them with his powerful army, which will attack like the mighty Pirates River overflowing its banks. Enemy soldiers will cover Judah like a flood reaching up to your neck. But God is with us; He will spread His wings and protect. Protect our land, all of you foreign nations. Go ahead and prepare for war, but you will be crushed. Get together and make plans, but you will fail because God is with us. The Lord took hold of me with His powerful hand and said, "I'm warning you. Don't act like these people." Then call something a rebellious pilot, just because they do, and don't be afraid of something just because they are. I am the one you should fear and respect. 
I am the holy God, the Lord of powerful. Run to me for protection. I am a rock that will make both you and Israel stumble and break their bones. I am a trap that will catch the people of Jerusalem. They will be captured and dragged away. Syria, Isaiah and his followers. My message and my teachings are to be sealed and given to my followers. Meanwhile, I patiently trust the Lord even though he is no longer pleased with Israel. My children and I are warning signs to Israel from the Lord of Powerful who lives on Mount Zion. Someone may say to you, go to the fortunate teller, fortune teller who makes soft chirping sounds or asks the spirit of the dead. After all, a nation ought to be able to ask its own gods what it should do. None of those who talk like that will live to see the light of day. They will go around in great pain and will become so hungry that they will angrily curse their king, their gods. And when they try to find health in heaven on, and on earth, they will find only trouble and darkness. Terrible trouble and deepest darkness. Chapter 9 But those who have suffered will no longer be in pain. The territories of Jerusalem and Naphtali in Gilead were once hated. But this land of the gentles across to Jordan River and along the Mediterranean Sea will be greatly respected. War is over. Those who walked in the dark have seen a bright light and it shines up everyone who lives in the land of darkness shadows. Our Lord, you have made your nation strong because of you. Each people each people are each people are great and celebrate like workers at harvest time or like soldiers diving of what they have taken. You have broken the power of those who abused and enslaved your people. You have rescued them just as you saved your people from Midian the boots of marching warriors and the broad stained uniforms have been fed to flames and eaten by fire a child has been born a child has been born for us we have been given a son who will be our ruler his name will be wonderful advisor and mighty god eternal father and prince of peace his power will never end peace will last forever he will rule david's king and make it grow strong he will always rule with honesty and justice the lord of powerful will make certain that all of this is done God will punish Israel. The Lord had warned the people of Israel and all of them knew it, including everyone in the capital city of Samaria. But they were proud and stubborn and sad. Houses of brick and sycamore has fallen to the ground. But we will build houses with stones and cedar. The Lord made their enemies attack them. They sent the Ar Aramins from the east and Palestines from the west. 
they swallowed up Israel. But even this, this, even this did not stop him from being angry, so he kept on punishing them. The people of Israel still did not turn back to the Lord All-Powerful and worship Him. In one day, he cut off their head and tail, their leaves and branches. Their rulers and leaders were the head, and the lying prophets were the tail. They had led the nation down the wrong path, and the people were close, confused. The Lord was angry with his people and kept punishing them. Because they had turned against him, they were evil and spoke foolishly. That's why he didn't have pity on their young people or on their widows and orphans. Evil had spread like a raging forest fire, sending thorn brushes up in smoke. The Lord of Powerful was angry and used the people as a fuel for the for a fire that scorched the land. They turned against each other like wild animals attacking and eating everyone around them, even their own relatives. But still they were not satisfied. The tribe of Abraham and Manasseh turned against each other, then joined the forces to attack Judah. But the Lord was still angry and ready to punish the nation even more. Chapter 10 Your people are in for trouble. You have made cruel and unfair laws that let you cheat the fool and needed the rob widows and orphans. But what will you do when you are fiercely attacked and punished by foreigners? Where will you run for help? Where will you hide your valuables? How will you escape being captured or killed? The Lord is still angry and he isn't true with you yet. The Lord proposed and the king of Assyria. The Lord says, I am furious and I will use the king of Assyria as a club to beat down you godless people. I am angry with you and I will send him to attack you. He will take what he wants and walk on you, mud, you like mud in the street. He has even bigger plans in mind because he wants to destroy many nations. The king of Assyria says, My army of commanders are kings. They have already captured the city of Karno, Kachemish, Hamas, Arpad, Samaria and Damascus. The gods of Jerusalem and Samaria are weaker than the gods of those powerful nations. And I will destroy Jerusalem together with its gods and idols, just as I did Samaria. The Lord will do what he has planned against Jerusalem and Mount Zion. Then he will, he will punish the proud and most fourth king of Assyria, who says, I did these things by my own power, because I am smart and clever. I attacked kings like a wild bull, and I took the land and the treasures of their nations. I have conquered the whole world, and it was easier than taking eggs from an unguarded nest. No one even flag, flapped a wing or made a peep. King of Assyria, can an ox or a soul of a power the one who used it? Can a wooden pole lift whoever holds it? The mighty Lord of Power will send a terrible disease to strike down your army. And you will burn with 
fever under your royal robes. The holy God, who is, who is the light of Israel, will turn into fire. In one day, you will go up in flames, just like a thorn bush. The Lord will make your beautiful forest and fertile fields slowly rot. There will be so few trees that even a young child can count them. Only a few will come back. The time is coming when the survivors from Israel and Judah will completely depend on the Holy Lord of Israel. Instead of nations that defeated them, there were as many people as there are grains of sand along the seashores, but only the few will survive to come back to Israel's mighty God. This is because he has threatened to destroy their nation just as they deserve. The Lord of Power has promised that everyone on his earth will be punished. Now the Lord God of Power says to his people in Jerusalem, the Assyria will beat you with sticks and abuse you just as the Egyptian did. But don't be afraid of them. Soon I will stop being angry with you and I'll punish them for their crimes. I will beat the Assyrians with a whip as I did the people of Midian near the rock at Arab. And I will show the same mighty power that I used when I made a path through the sea, of sea in Egypt. Then they will no longer rule your nation. All will go well for you, and your burden will be lifted. Enemy troops have reached the town of Ayat. They have gone through Migran, and they stored their supplies at Mishmash before crossing the valley and spending the night at Geba. The people of Rama are terrified. Everyone in Gibea, the hometown of Saul, has run away. Loud crying can be heard in the town of Garim, Rayasha, and sorrowful Anatos. No one is left in Madmena or Gebim. Today, the enemy will camp at Nob and shake the threatening fist at Mount Zion in Jerusalem. But the Lord of Power used his fierce might to bring down the tallest trees and chop off every branch with an ox. The glorious Lord will destroy every tree in the forest of Lebanon. Chapter 11 Peace at last, like a branch that sprouts from a stump. Someone from David's family will someday be king. The Spirit of the Lord will be with him to give him understanding, wisdom, and insight. He will be powerful and he will know the honor the Lord. His greatest joy will be to obey the Lord. This king ought to judge by appearance or listen to rumor. The poor and the needy will be treated with fairness and with justice. His word will be law everywhere in the land, and the criminals will be put to death. Honesty and fairness will be his loyal loves. Leopard will lie down with young goats, and wolves will rat with lambs. Calves and lion will eat together and be cared for by little children. Cows and bears will share the same pasture. Their young will rest side by side. Lion and oxen will both eat straw. Little children will pay. 
play near Snake Coast, they will stick their hands into dens of poisonous snakes and never be hurt. Nothing harmful will take care take place on the Lord Holy Mountain, just as water fills the sea. The land will be filled with people who know and honor the Lord. God's people will come back home. The time is coming when the one of David's descendants will be the signal for the people of all nations to come together. They will follow his advice and his own nation will become famous. When that day comes, the Lord will again reach out his mighty arm and bring home his people who have survived in Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Ethiopia, Aram, Shinar, Hamath, and land along the coast. He will give a signal to the nation, and he will bring together the refugees from Judah and Israel, who have been scattered all over the earth. Israel will stop being jealous of Judah, and Judah will no longer be the enemy of Israel. Instead, they will get together and attack the Palestines in the west. Then they will defeat the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites in the east. They will rule those people and attack and take from them whatever they want. The Lord will dry up the arm of the rats near Egypt and he will send the scorching wind to divide the Euphrates River into seven streams that anyone can step across. Then for his people who survive, there will be a good road from Syria, just as there was a good road for their ancestors when they left Egypt. Chapter 12, Song of Praise At that time you will see, you will say, I thank you Lord, you are angry with me, but you stopped being angry and gave me comfort. I trust you to save me, Lord God. I won't be afraid. My power and my strength come from you, and you have saved me. With great joy, you people will great Get water from the well of victory. At the time you will say, Our Lord, we are thankful and we worship only you. We will tell the nations how glorious you are and what you have done. Because of your wonderful deeds, we will sing your praises everywhere on earth. Sing people of Zion, celebrate the greatness of the Holy Lord of Israel. God is here to help you. Amen.